Um, well, first, it's a very important point to get across that, as you say, um, Darwinism, natural selection, does not provide a good moral basis. Uh, in the form of social Darwinism, it, it has been responsible for a lot of evil in human history. Uh, and um, I have very often said that I'm a passionate opponent of Darwinism as a begetter of moral principles. Although I'm a passionate supporter of Darwinism as a scientific principle for explaining how evolution works and how we, uh, how we come to be here. Um, I don't think that we're going to get our morals by imitating nature. Uh, certainly not from imitating Darwinian natural selection, uh, nor, I think, from looking at the way animals behave and saying, that's a nice way to behave, let's do it. Uh, in making such a judgment, we are using some other criterion to, to decide that that's a nice way of behaving. And we don't need to get the lesson from the animals in order to, to do that. Um, so we, I think we need to get our morals, get our moral values from somewhere else. And it's somewhat mysterious where we actually do get our moral values from. Um, I think it's pretty clear if you look at history, and, and I'm reinforced in this by Steven Pinker's latest book, uh, The Better Angels of Our Nature, which I strongly recommend. It's a massive, great tome, um, arguing that with inevitable zigzags and, and some backward turns, we have been getting steadily nicer over historical time. And the number, he measures it in all sorts of ways, the numbers of homicides, the, the, the risk of dying as a result of a homicidal attack, and so on. Um, we are getting steadily nicer. I think you can see this if you just look back over an ordinary human lifetime, or uh, over, over a number of decades, let's say, um, or a little bit longer than that, perhaps. If you look at the moral values which uh, were common in Victorian times, you can take thinkers, intellectuals, in the vanguard of liberal progressive thought, people like Abraham Lincoln, people like Charles Darwin, people like uh, Thomas Henry Huxley, who were advanced in their opinions compared to the conservatives of their day. So if you take the issues of the day, like slavery, treatment of women, uh, treatment of children, um, the most advanced thinkers, liberal intellectuals of Victorian times, would be regarded as terribly reactionary by today's, by today's standards. Uh, virtually all Victorian Englishmen were racist, uh, appallingly racist by modern standards, and um, virtually all were sexist. Uh, as you probably know, vote, the vote was given to women in uh, Western countries, in I think no country except New Zealand, before the 20th century. And uh, in most countries, women didn't get the vote until the 1920s or even later. In Switzerland, I think not until the 1970s. Um, this is astonishing, but it shows, I, it, it's an example of what I call the, the shifting moral zeitgeist. Something is changing in our moral zeitgeist, and it's changing so rapidly that you can actually detect it from, certainly from century to century, and I think even from decade to decade. You can look at just fiction through the 20th century, just ordinary popular fiction, thrillers, or Agatha Christie, detective stories, that kind of thing. If you look at detective stories in the 1920s by people like Agatha Christie, people like uh, Sapper. Um, they're appallingly racist. Things are changing. The, the moral zeitgeist is shifting. 
you can label a person or a novel, a book, a newspaper, by the decade from which it comes from, you can label it by looking at things like the racism, the sexism, etc., that it, uh, that it displays. So, I'm stuck now for an explanation because it seems to me an empirical fact which is demonstrated again and again that our moral values do change and they are characteristic of the decade in which we live. They change and they're characteristic of the decade in, in which we live. And we need an explanation for why they change in this progressive way. And I think it's going to be something rather complicated uh, some combination of journalism, <laughs> law, politics, uh, just ordinary sort of dinner party conversation, consciousness raising exercises such as we've seen with feminism, where a deliberate effort has been made by writers, by journalists, by speakers to raise our consciousness about the use of gendered pronouns, for example, so that nowadays anybody today, anybody in 2014 who hears a phrase like one man, one vote, kind of winces. Whereas in a century ago, it would have been perfectly normal uh, sort of phrase. <coughs> there is, I think then, a complicated interactive process going on in society which lies behind this shifting moral zeitgeist. And uh, so I think that, that that is the actual answer to, to, to where we get up changing morals from. Um, and I think that it's much clearer that, that, that they do change than what the cause of the change is.